Well, another Duramax done. This is Shane's uh, 2006 2500 uh, HD Chevy Duramax. This has the LBZ engine, so you know, obviously the uh, truck to have, 0607 classic style. And Shane brought this to us. It had a lift kit on it, IFS bolt-on that was pretty worn out. And uh, he needed to fix the IFS kit and it only made sense to put the solid axle in it. So this is the right truck and the right engine to do it to. And this is our six inch kit on 37s. Um, he's got 37 inch Toyos, 17 inch trail ready rims, uh, simulated bead lock. And he went with the Fox shock package on this one. So obviously 2005 plus Super Duty axle in here. And you can see our front axle, so uh, Alan at the gear and axle shop and the boys went ahead and fully rebuilt this axle. And if you take a look right there inside the knuckle, while we were rebuilding it, we went ahead and did the uh, 1550 axle shaft upgrade to it. Uh, it's got 430 gear stuffed in there. And this one's even got an air locker put in there. This is our heavy duty two inch quarter wall tie rod, the single Fox stabilizer kit. And he's got the steering box brace as well up top. Fully went for it on this one. Uh, got the truck done. Seems to ride really nice. Uh, some of the cool things that we added on this one, I'll pop the hood real quick. So with the air locker, you gotta find a spot to put the compressor. And on these trucks, there's not a lot of room. So Andrew went ahead and built that. It's got a, uh, air compressor that mounts kind of right on the AC bracket on the engine underneath the hood fits awesome and then we also went ahead and plumbed it to the back bumper so you don't have to hook up um, underneath the hood to hook your airline up so underneath the uh, front fender pretty pretty uh, straightforward it's got our frame plates right here shock towers reservoir mounted up top with the Fox two and a half inch coilovers and this thing sits on single rate with a 400 pound spring. So as you can see, the slider is actually touching the double nut adjusters. And then this upper spring just ends up being a tender. Uh, that way it's nice and quiet, no squeaking when you're driving it. Um, one of the things about these LBZs is with 37s, the wheel opening is pretty small. We trim the inner fender right here uh, by the washer bottle and then fully trim the front bumper. So in the future, Shane most likely is gonna do a half ton Washer, bo washer bottle swap and get that out of the way because that is one spot where depending on your wheel offset the tire may rub there in the fender well and as you can see right back here the inner fender was already trimmed when the truck came in a little bit uh, so that's cleaned out you can see our brake lines tucked way back in here they go behind the shock tower and uh, one of the really cool things about this swap is that while we were doing the solid axle swap Shane also decided to upgrade the transfer case. So today we're gonna to talk about a 273 transfer case swap in the 99-07 GMHD platform. This truck happens to be a Duramax, which started in 2001. Uh, so this truck came with a 263 transfer case, which is right here. So as you may know, or may have heard, the 261, which is the manual shift of the GMHD transfer case, and the 263 has always had what they call a pump rub problem, um, which means the oil pump in the back of the transfer case starts rubbing on the aluminum of the tail housing till it causes a leak, the oil spills out, the transfer case explodes. Um, there's fixes for that. There's a new case half, there's a pump rub fix. It's fairly affordable, but it's gonna happen. This case right here, when we took the truck apart, had zero oil in it. So therefore, instead of fixing this 263, we're doing the solid axle, it's time to do the 273 swap. So this is the 273. The 273 is also a new process transfer case. Now this transfer case comes in Ford F250s, Ford F350s, Ford F450s, and also some Dodge trucks as well. The Dodge version's a little different. Um, we buy this transfer case from Transfer Case Express as a GM swap. Um, so here's some of the differences. As you can see, the 263 has a slip yoke in the rear. Therefore, it has a slip yoke rear drive line. Uh, fluid can drip out of this, cause leaks. Um, not the most ideal rear drive line. 
The 273 has a fixed yoke and a flat flange. Therefore, you could run 1480, 1410, 1350, 1350 CV, 1410 CV, all kinds of options for rear drive lines. Whenever you have the chance, if you have the funds when you're doing your swap or you plan on doing it, this is the option. 273 or 271 swap from Transfer Case Express with our solid axle kit. And you can see the transfer case right here hanging down. It's a huge transfer case, still above our cross member. And uh, because we did this transfer case swap, the top is a fixed yoke up there and uh, the slip is in the drive shaft now. So we have a 1410 rear drive shaft in it, U joint to U joint. And then if you sneak up and look at the front drive shaft, there's the slip up there at the pinion. So that's a 1350 CV in there. And right now with a six inch lift on this thing, if you look at that front drive shaft, it's almost perfectly flat, no angle to it. And that transfer case has a fixed yoke on the front as well for that 1350 CV. Um, you work your way over here to the back and this height that's sitting at right now is the height if you do a shackle flip with six inch shackles. So this is our shackle flip with six inch shackles. In the rear, we do the U-bolt flip with it. So it's our plates on top and it, also an axle relocator bracket. You can kind of see right underneath the leaf spring, acts kind of like a zero rate. So we've offset the axle back an inch before we ordered the new drive line so that the tires end up right in the center of the wheel well. And then we also had to put a six degree shim with that axle relocator to get the pinion pointed back down. So when you do the shackle flip, it does rotate the pinion up a little bit and you have to adjust for that. As you can see back here, Fox 2.0, shocks as well and then right here right here on the rear bumper boom there's the air chuck for the onboard air so it runs the air locker and leaves you a spot there to pump up your tires or uh, run anything that needs air one of the last things that you have to do that nobody ever thinks about when you do the shackle flip is to take a look right here you can see that exhaust coming through and over the leaf spring so before the leaf spring was up a lot higher, so we had to cut the tip off and modify the rear exhaust. We did some mandrel bends and dumped it down right there uh, above the leaf spring. And uh, that's uh, one of the last little things you gotta do. You, you, you gotta remember that's another couple hundred bucks to uh, modify the tailpipe when you do our shackle flip. You'll always have to do something with the tailpipe when you do our shackle flip. Um, other than that, just a clean driver. Um, fun to drive it's the right year so if you're going to do a solid axle swap the lbz is the way to go in my opinion hope you enjoy this truck